Hello and welcome to Lost in Sci-Fi and Fantasy. I'm your host, Leo, and today we are talking about Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters All Out Attack. It's a very long title. <laughs> but we are continuing our Godzilla journey with this movie. This is, again, another one of the movies that the director of the newest Godzilla movie, Godzilla Minus One, is... Um, well, not is, he did, prom like, do a showing of before the new movie came out in Japan. So, this one is an interesting one. I It's the first one uh, so far of these movies that we're talking about that I haven't seen. Even the next movie, Shin Godzilla, I have seen. So this is the only one, actually, besides... Uh, sh uh, <laughs> this is the only one in this set of movies that I hadn't seen. Except for, of course, you know, Godzilla Minus One, which isn't out in North America yet. So, what's the movie about? Uh, well, it it's an interesting case, because this is another reboot. So, this one came out in 2001. It came out after... Um, after Godzilla, Godzilla 2000 and Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Um, it came out after those two. And just, they decided to kind of wind it back. So, it's very similar to those legacy sequels that you see nowadays. Where... That's actually quite popular nowadays, um, where they they go back to a series, and they specifically and they specifically go back, erase a certain amount, if not all of the previous continuity, and start again, branching off of a specific movie. So with the Halloween movies, they erased all of them except for the first movie, and now we've had the new Halloween trilogy. Um, then I think that they've done similar things for other movies recently as well, but I can't think of them at the moment. Technically, they're kind of doing that with the Saw movies. <laughs> they went back to between Saw 1 and 2, um, for this most recent movie. Though they haven't erased the continuity of the other movies, it still technically kind of does. It, it's, it's a thing. Anyhow. With this one, it also erases the continuity of all of the movies except for the original Godzilla. So that happened, and there hasn't been anything that happened since that movie. That is the premise of this movie. Uh, it opens with the Defense Force. The, um, well, I guess they're technically the Japanese Defense Force. But... Um, they have nothing to do. Where in the previous movies, they've been this, like, you know, ever-present force, ever... Like, they're the ones that create Mecha Godzilla and whatnot to try and fight Godzilla in the old continuity. In this continuity, they've just been sitting around for 50 years, and they've actually been a point of, like, political strain. Uh, because, well, similar to the current American government, they felt that they were an unnecessary, overfunded um, blob that just kind of sat there. And they, the movie opens with a meeting where they're discussing, well, the one and only Godzilla attack that they they have documented, the one time that they were able to do it correctly. Uh, and they're t they're talking about okay, so what do we do if a Godzilla does happen? We don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, they they have a plan in place, but they. They haven't been able to properly test it or anything. But they do mention that there was a monster attack in New York. And they're like, well, that has to be Godzilla, right? And they're like, oh, well, who knows? Probably not. And that is a direct reference to the uh, 98 American Godzilla. Yeah, Japan was not happy about that film. <laughs> um, so much so that in a, a future movie... 
Godzilla Final Wars, the last of the millennium era of Godzilla, they they literally put Zilla in the film and kill him off by just bumping him into <laughs> into the Sydney Opera House and killing him. Very short uh, sequence. But yeah, with that said, they have this meeting and then it kind of cuts away. And they there's they get an immediate or relatively immediate uh, distress signal that an American nuclear sub has gone missing. So they dispatch two little submarines to go see what's going on. And one of them gets absolutely bodied. But the other one is able to see what's going on and sees, you know, Godzilla's iconic fins, kind of, or backplates, whatever you want to call them, going through the water near the nuclear sub. Because they see the destruction of the sub and whatnot. And they're like, okay, well, something happened. (laughs) And then they see Godzilla. Then... So that footage gets sent back. Then there's a series of incidents that start happening. Mostly to do with youths. So the director has stated that his the, the fate of the teens in this film is kind of directly tied to how he he personally was feeling about teens at the time. And that... It was kind of a sign of him getting older because he saw that the teens were getting a lot more disrespectful and and whatnot. So he decided to kill them all, I guess. <laughs> so in this film, almost every incident is instigated by a group of teens. So the first major incident is is kicked off by... Uh, a bunch of like biker teens they are going around on these bikes and they knock over an idol uh thing like shrine thing and speed off while being rowdy they go into a tunnel the tunnel collapses on them and it's revealed to have been baragon uh although it's misidentif- Baragon is initially misidentified as Godzilla because it's been 50 years since Godzilla attacked and people are just trying to forget that it happened. And a lot of people, I guess, have. Um, so much so that the main character that we follow is actually making a... Well, it would probably be quite popular nowadays, but... Um, a finding Bigfoot esque show where they're going through the like rural countryside or villages of Japan pretending to be hunting Godzilla. <laughs> and the thing is, when I saw that, I was like, oh wow, that's very, mm, that's very reminiscent of garbage TV that we have today in America. That's depressing. <laughs> but yeah, so they. They're trying to make a fake Godzilla thing. And they get confronted by the mayor of the little village that they're filming in. And the mayor is yelling at them saying, Hey, you guys were supposed to be doing an actual documentary. But after we looked into you, we saw that you guys just make schlock like this. And they were like, it'll bring in money. Like a lot of people watch our stuff. It'll bring in tourists and money and whatnot so eventually after an earthquake he goes okay sure and then that's when it cuts to the scene of the hooligans because it's with the mayor and i guess his mistress being like "Ooh, you know i did an interview so i might be famous soon and there's going to be a ton of tourists coming to to the village yay then the hooligans attack knock over the idol and then start buzzing down the highway go into a tunnel tunnel collapses on them and so on and so forth. Then we're introduced to the military and the reporter lady, uh, Yuri. Her dad is part of the military and whatnot. I don't know if he's in this scene. I can't remember. It's a fairly quick scene and it 
amounts to very little, to be honest. Except for introducing one of the key weapons and getting the witness statement. That's kind of the the two things that the scene kind of contributes to the overall plot. Because, but it doesn't introduce the the plot crucial weapon all that well. It introduces it as a thing, but they shoot it into the to the hillside, and the idea is that it like drills in to the to the hillside and does something. It's supposed to explode, but we don't see the explosion. The purpose of why they did it isn't fully clear. My best guess is that they, since the tunnel collapsed, they were either trying to clear the tunnel or completely remove the rest of the mountainside so that they could just have the road going through. But you don't really see anything happen, so it's unclear. Literally, after they shoot it and it lands in the hillside, a guy asks, uh, what if it explodes wrong and makes things worse and the the guy that's leading the operation there's like ah it'll be fine and then they they go off to get the witness statement the witness it, it's very reminiscent of a lot of this is actually quite reminiscent of the 98 godzilla actually so the the witness states that it was godzilla you know big head and whatnot crawling through the ground <laughs> But he, he states that it was Godzilla, so that's the report that's sent out to certain people, is that it, it seems to be Godzilla. It's not. <laughs> the second incident that happens... Um, well, so, I guess in the meantime, in the meantime, Yuri is just kind of like running around. She's trying to turn their schlocky garbage show into a legitimate show. By trying to get her boss and crew to agree to actually try and film, you know, these actual monsters that are seemingly appearing. But even though the monsters are starting to appear, not everyone's believing that it's actually happening. Um, especially, like, with the resurgence of, like, Godzilla and whatnot, there's the question of if he even exists. So... Because they believe that Godzilla well, died in the 50s. That was a one-time thing. So what what's there to be worried about? And the belief is also that God, Godzilla was driven away by the military. You know, the military were able to come together and push them away. It was their greatest, you know, triumph and whatnot. But... It is later found out that that is not the case. Well, if you've watched the original Godzilla, you know it's not the case. Um, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So she's trying to make the program legitimate. The military starts to go looking for Godzilla. But because there's conflicting reports and whatnot, they don't... They're, they're not going to do it. They're not going to, you know, commit a bunch of forces to taking on Godzilla until there's, like, proper confirmation. And they even after Godzilla does eventually properly surface, they still wait. But, again, that's a little bit later. First, there is the... the emergence of Mothra. So, once again, it's a bunch of rowdy youths. They're at a beach... somewhere. <laughs> it's not fully specified. Like, the location's named, but... It's hard to tell where that actually is. Because um, I can't tell if it's like a lake or a bay or where. But they're by a body of water. They go ransack a nearby convenience store. And a dog is barking. They get a bit frustrated with the do barking dog. So a guy puts the dog in a box. And they break an idol thing. Take it. Put it in the box with the dog. Intending to drown the dog. They're all murdered by Mothra. Uh, Mothra in the like pupil stage thing. Where it eats them, I guess. And then comes out and murders everyone. Then makes a cocoon. Also, during the uh, 
Yuri's investigation, she comes across this old man. So when they were first like recording, she saw an old man just standing in the woods creepily. Then when the youths, specifically the beach youths, were being rowdy, he appeared again. Then they go... So the the Yuri, the reporter, goes to talk to a witness. And this witness is the old man. He's in jail for some reason. They say that he was destroying a shrine, and so they arrested him. He warns that Godzilla is going to return. Godzilla is the, like... The culmination of the souls of the people wronged by Japan during World War II. And they are going to... They, that is why Godzilla is seeking revenge. If Japan wants to be saved, they must go out and make sure that the Guardians are released. So the Guardians being Mothra, King Ghidorah, and... Bodagon. And they you know they they then go to like see what what's happening and um suddenly while they're investigating uh Godzilla you know emerges and p- part of the in- investigation scenes uh, involve a because I think that Ghidorah is kind of being held near Mount Fuji, and uh, there's a man who attempts um, unaliving himself, and and uh, he 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 fails. He he was intending to use the like statue thing as a uh, a platform. And a very unstable branch as um, his mode and his tie. But the ground, after he tips the thing over, gives out beneath him while he's testing the branch. And um, he, he slides down and sees Ghidorah frozen in like an ice thing. Ghidorah doesn't awaken at this point. He kind of leaves and starts warning people. But then... Uh, Bodagon emerges and starts working his way through and people think it's a red Godzilla and people are like, Godzilla's not red though. Then Godzilla actually emerges and is starts working his way across and they, they meet. They meet and they fight. And there's a nice little homage to the original Godzilla where he's like peeking over a hill. Then he actually like knocks through the hill to, to get at uh, Bodagon. And there is a clash. There's a fight. Um, and to take a long fight. To to cut it down to be short. Uh, Bodagon gets his ass kicked. Or their ass kicked. It's hard to tell. <laughs> it's a giant monster. Uh, but gets their ass kicked. And gets completely destroyed. By uh, by Godzilla, and Yuri is there, you know, filming a bit, and ends up getting concussed slightly. Goes to the hospital, has a conversation with a kid. Uh, but Godzilla continues his trek through. At this time, Mothra hatches as giant moth, and um. The old man, during the Bodagon attack, is released from prison. And then he's, like, almost instantly at the sight of Ghidorah. And he, like, just kind of nudges the thing onto the ice. And that works for some reason. And then Ghidorah rises. And the old man dies, question mark? But while uh, Godzilla and Mothra begin their fight, Yuri is, you know, she, like, gets a bike and starts keeping after Godzilla. 
and is like recording the whole thing the entire time. They shoot missiles at Godzilla. It does not work. They try the drill charge missiles. They do not work. Um, and then, you know, the military is told to, to kind of, you know, keep an eye on things and whatnot. It, it's the whole shebang. You know, they, they actually decide to start getting involved. And, you know, the drill charges are the ones that were introduced earlier. They didn't really work. Um, and is that around this point that the big question is asked, like, hey, we were able to get rid of Godzilla before, right? And the Prime Minister's like, well, Godzilla was killed by an unknown chemical... And the creator is dead, and his documentation of the device is dead, or is missing. So, yeah, we covered it up because it would make us, it would have made us look like a fool if some other guy just kind of came in and did our job for us. So we, we covered it up and made us look good. But yeah, so the Guardians, we need to use the Guardians. <laughs> Um, but using the Guardians isn't going so well. Uh, Mothra is getting her ass absolutely handed to her nine ways to Sunday. Um, and when Ghidorah arrives, same. Ghidorah gets, like, his neck, his middle neck bitten and thrown into a building and either fully knocked out or killed. It's not fully shown, like, at the very least knocked out. Uh, Mothra, in an attempt to make sure that King Ghidorah does not die, sacrifices herself by fully taking the brunt of uh, a blast, but doesn't fully die. When Godzilla is then shot upon by a lot of drill charges and whatnot, uh, he gets angry and absolutely destroys most of the military, save for, like, one boat. And... He he's about to fire on the last boat when Mothra is coming up to to like intervene, and Godzilla whips around, shoots a, an metallic blast at Mothra. Mothra dies, becomes classic Mothra dust, and gives King Ghidorah a massive power boost. Ghidorah starts fighting with Godzilla. It's going well. Um, Ghidorah gets a big power blast off on Godzilla. Damaging Godzilla, making it to where they might be able to get it shot off if they do it right. So they take their last uh, drill charge and two torpedoes um, and take two subs, one with the drill charge, one with the torpedoes, and they go. Then they shoot off. Two torpedoes with drill charges, supposedly. And they land on Ghidorah. And for some reason, the guys are excited. Like, the, the commander, Yuri's dad, is like, excellent. And you're like, why is that excellent? You hit the wrong guy. <laughs> but the charges go off, and Ghidorah goes down. And you're like, oh, okay, so doomed, I guess. Uh, Godzilla's starting to mess with the submarines and whatnot. And, like, they, they check him and he does have, like, a gash where they could have drilled, but they missed because Godzilla, like, turned at the last second. It's weird. Uh, Godzilla blasts a thing and knocks down part of the bridge where Yuri is... And a part of the stone from Ghidorah's, like, little idol thing falls out of uh, her assistant's pocket and lands in the water. And it's a bit of stone that while they were investigating, they just picked up and they're like, this is probably something. And then they left it at that. <laughs> but it falls out of his pocket, goes in, absorbs into Ghidorah. Ghidorah is now, like, fully powered up and is fighting again. And goes and is able to help 
whoop, or at least keep uh, Godzilla busy. Godzilla also kind of in the meantime, like, so Godzilla ends up killing Ghidorah. So now all three of the the Guardians have died, but their spirits like absorb into Godzilla and Godzilla starts sinking. And as he's sinking, uh, the commander flies into Godzilla's mouth, is eaten. Then he wakes up, shoots off a drill charge, the last one that he was carrying. It goes into the wounded part of Godzilla, blows up, and Godzilla's about to shoot a blast, but it goes out the hole instead. Tries to do it again, out the hole instead. And then ends up, you know, dying, starts bleeding out. Uh, the commander's able to pop out the hole he made in the chest. And um, Godzilla goes to, I guess, do a thing and ends up blowing up. Godzilla dead. <laughs> and then the movie kind of just ends. It ends on a cliffhanger that is never resolved. It ends on a cliffhanger that is never resolved. It, um, It's Godzilla's heart beating on the ocean floor. And presumably that would have been used in the immediate next movie, which was uh, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. But instead they decided to kind of reboot it again. And instead of being this Godzilla's heart, it's the original Godzilla's skeleton. And they put that into uh, Mechagodzilla and yeah, to, to fight another Godzilla. But yeah, that, that's the movie. It's overall not bad. The The plot seems a little bit heavy-handed at times, but it's not the worst Godzilla plot for sure. Uh, and it, it does tackle some interesting things. You know, it even sprinkles in a little bit of that good old classic bureaucracy. You know, getting in the way of them actually doing anything to fight Godzilla. <laughs> I mean, overall, it's a pretty good movie. Um, I, I do find it interesting that they decided to, like, recontextualize the backgrounds of three of the monsters. Bodegon gets absolutely the shit end of the stick uh, in this movie. Not even included in the title of the movie, when literally Godzilla, Mothra, and Ghidorah are all in the title. But Bodegon gets fucking shit on. And Bodegon's the first monster that you properly see in the movie. And then, um, also the first to get absolutely killed. So, <laughs> they really did Bodegon dirty in this film. But, hey. Originally, uh, for the film, though, they were going to do, um, three, like, kind of dinosaur-esque monsters. Uh, it's like Varan, Angurus, and Bodegon. And... So those three were going to be the Guardians, and it would make would have made a little bit more sense for them to be recontextualized as Guardians, but they weren't, I guess, as big of big name draws as they were hoping for. So instead, that got shelved, and there was a, a follow up trilogy that was completely unrelated, which was Mech, uh, Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, Tokyo SOS, and Final Wars. Those were kind of the the three movies that formed an actual trilogy. Um, kind of. And then Final Wars was the last movie for a good chunk of time until 2014's American Godzilla and 2016's Shin Godzilla. Then the Netflix trilogy of movies and the the uh, now Godzilla minus one. Plus, of course, you know, the leg legendary movies. Fun fact, though, I, I did a little bit of research and I, I came across a very interesting uh, line of things uh, related to one of the producers of Godzilla. He was originally the director of Godzilla vs. Uh, Hedera, which is the the big pollution monster uh, in, in Godzilla. And he, he was like one of the writers and the director of that film. And he really wanted to do a movie called Godzilla 3D. Uh, it was, it, 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 it was intended to be a short film, 
the contract that he signed w- with Toho was that it could be no longer than 60 minutes. And so he went through all these like revisions and whatnot. He wanted it to be like a, a globe spanning film f- for like what was originally going to be like a 30 minute film. <laughs> it like spans a, a, a lot of the globe. And yeah, it was a very interesting project. I do recommend you look into it because it's just kind of interesting. And it is the deal. It, like his trying to get that movie made is what ended up leading to Legendary getting the film deal to make their Godzilla film and subsequently the MonsterVerse to follow. So it, it, it's a very interesting thing to see just how how one man having a dream film led to to the Americans getting to make Godzilla again that it's very fun it's very sad though too because he was credited as producer in the first Godzilla film that Legendary did and has posthumously been credited as an executive producer since then because sadly he did die in 2017 um, and never got to make the film he wanted to. He he even had, like after that deal ended up falling through, he did pitch like a, a different one starring mainly uh, Herora. So yeah, it's a, it's a very sad thing. Uh, his name was Yoshimitsu Bano. And yeah, it, it's just an insane plot that uh, was planned from 2003 to 2009. And then in 2010, he ended up helping Legendary get the deal for the the what became Godzilla 2014. So yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting tale and path of things happening. Anywho, uh... Yeah, with that said, though, did do I recommend this film? Absolutely. Um, you could technically watch it on its own. Uh, you could watch it after you watch the original Godzilla. You don't really have to watch any of the other movies. That's, I guess, a nice-ish thing. Um, it's one of those, one of those things. I can't remember which one said that because there there was one thing that I read that said that it, there was like in an alternate timeline where Godzilla wasn't killed by the oxygen destroyer. And I don't know if it was any of the ones that I have, or if that's the eighties Godzilla. I'm not sure. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to what I was reading at the time. Oh, well, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a relatively simple plot. It, it has a lot of shades of now this is how you make a Godzilla movie to it um that the the, the it, this feels like this was their actual direct response to to the um to the American Godzilla because the one that came out the following year after the American Godzilla was the king of all monsters is back and bigger than ever when a UFO reveals itself as a massive alien monster uh, with awesome destructive powers. That That's Godzilla 2000. And then after that, I believe, is versus Mega Gears? Yeah. After that would be versus Mega Gears. And then it's this one. But this one of them feels like the most like this is the proper response and this is how you make a Godzilla film because there's a lot of slight homages and references to the American Godzilla film there's fishermen fishing like in a like a bay area when Godzilla emerges and when Godzilla's emerging you just see a big bulge in in the sea, and then, boom, Godzilla, and the fishermen run away. It, it's a, it's very similar to the 98 Godzilla in that way. Um, 
Godzilla hanging around in the city is kind of feels like it with the military just kind of hanging about also in the city is also kind of a bit of a feeling there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it just, the, the, there seems to be some minor homages, but mostly it feels like them saying, this is how you make a Godzilla film. Like, <laughs> screw you guys. This is how you do it. But yeah, with that, I guess we could kind of go into some general updates for uh, the channel and stuff. So I recently started a new edited series. It is the outer worlds. Uh, so far so good <laughs> though. <laughs> as was the, the case last week, it seems for just about everything. There was an audio issue. So Again, I, I'm sorry for the audio issue from the last episode. It turned out that I was recording through my webcam. And it was so late at night that I, I couldn't fix it if I wanted to, sadly. Because um, I had to edit it and upload it still, and I needed to go to bed. But, yeah, so... I, I tried to fix it up as much as I could, but, yeah, it uh, it didn't go terribly great. As for um, as for the Outer Worlds episode, I so I, I thought, oh, you know, th these settings were pretty good for streaming, so why don't I use them for you know the the episode? Forgetting that the reason that I edited the episodes the way I did was that if anything went wrong, I would be able to tweak it. Or, you know, just have no um, no commentary over it, which would be fine. Relatively, if, say, the audio that I'm recording like this were to corrupt or whatever. I had, I had kind of forgotten that that was why I did that. Whoops. And, yeah, so the gameplay audio was way too quiet. And I, I couldn't do anything about it. So, yeah, lesson learned. Record the audio separately so that I can tweak it however I need to in editing. Whoops. <laughs> but yeah, um, as for that, uh, I was thinking about... Because I've watched a couple of movies recently. And I was thinking about doing some episodes on them, but you know, I'm currently doing the Godzilla thing. And I probably still will. But those episodes will come out, of course, after Godzilla. At which point, you know, some of them you won't be able to watch. Uh, because they'll probably be out of theaters. Because the theater cycle lately is so narrow. Especially during the holidays. It's insane. Like, the movie I'm talking about having recently watched is The Marvels. I recently watched it. And I, I would like to talk about it. But, uh, yeah. But I've been toying around with a, the potential of doing like an early access thing but I'm going to wait on that for now it's something that will probably happen in the future where if a scenario like this happens and I do end up recording it super early well people who get the early access thing will get that super early because <laughs> there, there are a lot of times where I will pre-record a bunch of episodes edit them and upload them sometimes and you know in, in those scenarios, people would get stuff early. And I think that that might be a, a nice nice thing to do. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's a mess. And and whatnot. But that, just, just to keep you guys up to date on just kind of what's going on through my mind. While I'm thinking about stuff. Because I do think about what to do and whatnot. And... While I'm on that topic, I am currently thinking of doing a bunch of streams relatively soon. Um, I, I'm also thinking of doing a divide and conquer strategy. So, in this case of divide and conquer, it's pretty much overwork myself just to see if anything changes. So the idea is to do three streams on YouTube and 
two on Twitch just to kind of see which one's going. But fear not, content will not change on the channel. The streams that I'll be doing on YouTube will still be, you know, Dark Souls and Mafia and whatnot. And the plan is to do one Dark Souls and two Mafia on YouTube to try to actually get through Mafia, damn it. And then after Mafia is done, it'll move to Mafia 2 and then Mafia 3. And then with Dark Souls, well, it's it's Dark Souls. But I've actually gone into strategizing with Dark Souls and now I have a plan for how I want to tackle it. In fact, the plan was to actually do a stream the day I'm recording this. You know, hours ago. It was, in fact, supposed to be before I even watched the movie and recorded this episode. But, my computer decided to crap out on me, and, um, yeah, so that got cancelled. <laughs> Luckily, I was able to get the computer back up and running in time to to start recording this. So, you know, looking on the bright side, at least that happened. <laughs> at least I was able to get it fixed. But, yeah. Other than that, when the episode comes out, so tomorrow, Monday... The idea would then be, I would do Mafia. So I'd stream Mafia, and then Tuesday I would stream something. But I'm not entirely sure if I'll fully start it this week or not. Because it's it's Thanksgiving week. And so I wouldn't be able to fully execute the schedule. In fact, for like the next month, it's going to be kind of hard to execute the schedule. So I'm, I'll probably still do at least... A YouTube stream or two this week and next week and possibly for the rest of the month and then I might actually wait until the new year to like fully jump on the the crackdown like push schedule we'll see I'll, I'll probably do a Dark Souls stream tomorrow and then Mafia sometime later that week maybe maybe Thursday Wednesday, not, not Wednesday, uh, Tuesday or Thursday is when it would be because um, I don't want to do a live stream that interferes with the upload, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's just back-end stuff. I don't want to don't want to bog you guys down too much with, with back-end stuff. I also might do an art stream sometime. Uh, when and where, I'm not entirely sure. I'm thinking I might do the art stream on Twitch, maybe. But if you guys are interested on in seeing it on YouTube, let me know, and I'll do it on YouTube instead. Uh, the art stream would consist of me painting a turtle. I have a, a faux stone turtle uh, that uh, I want to paint to look like a, an actual turtle. So uh, that's that's something I want to do, and I think it would be fun to do it on a live stream. So if you guys want to see that on YouTube, let me know. If not, uh, I'll do it on Twitch and see if that does anything there. We'll see. <laughs> And eventually, like, highlights or something would end up on YouTube anyway. Maybe even just, like, a, a fast-forwarded version of the stream. <laughs> Put to maybe some Wintergotten music. Who knows? Ideas. They're they're just flowing through me right now. Um, that's partially because it's, it's also quite late tonight. <laughs> I still need to edit this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Thank you guys so much for listening, even to the to the super rambly bits. If you guys liked this, feel free to give it a like, comment, subscribe on YouTube, or rate and review it, share it with your friends uh, on any podcast platform that you you have. It's always appreciated. Uh, check out my other stuff, like the the uh, weekly series uh, on Outer Worlds. That's going to be on Wednesdays. I forgot to do an announcement post of that sorry uh, and yeah check out my live streams when they come up probably on tuesday and on thursday is is the current plan <laughs> tuesday and thursday where i'll do one dark souls probably dark souls on tuesday and mafia on thursday and then i'll probably end up switching stuff around with how i plan on doing twitch stuff later as well anywho with all that said Thank you guys so much for joining me. I will talk to you guys next time when we are talking Shin Godzilla. Thank you and goodbye.